Mickey Munson, a right-hander from the Keystone State, gets the ball as the starter in this one. What do we need to know here, Danny? Hey, this guy's had a solid year up to this point. It's not an easy thing to do in baseball this year with all the high-scoring games, but this guy has an ERA of sub-3, and that's saying something. If he continues to do that, I think you're going to see a really good performance out of him in this one. In now, D.J. LeMayhew, and we are ready for some daytime baseball. First pitch coming. Here it is. Underway now in the Sunday finale as the game's first pitch is taken for bowl one. And guys, the Rays, as they begin play here this afternoon, four and two over their last six games, including a win last time out. Yeah, Maddie, this team finds itself with a huge lead, double digits right now, and climbing, playing really good baseball. Some people will say, oh, you don't want to have that big a lead. You start resting on your laurels. I, I, I look at it the other way, man. You've earned the right to kind of get some guys off their feet if the manager wants it. There's a lot of different ways you can go about it. This team's focused and playing really good baseball. I would not worry about it. Keep pushing the throttle. Well, that's a good pitch, but you have to get a little bit closer to the plate than that. That's that big sweeping slider. If it was a little closer, you might get a swing. Over at the knees, and that's the second strike. Ball three. Three and two now. Into the windup, ready with the payoff pitch. And that misses ball four. So a good battle to begin the ball game today, but the leadoff man will reach first anyway. Here's Echeverria now. And as you check out his righty lefty splits, no surprise that he hits better against southpaws than he does against right handers. First pitch of the at bat. And a curveball that time that broke too low. So let's take a peek at our umpiring crew in this one. Working the plate is Larry Bullard. Hey, Dero, Larry Bullard, he's pretty much right down the middle. You see very few managers and players getting into very many confrontations with Larry. Yeah, Larry lays in the weeds, Dan. Doesn't try and make it about him, and that's what the players love. He's got a pretty consistent strike zone, and he's approachable. Echeverria. Stands at an even six feet tall, a right-handed batter and thrower. He's currently on a one-year deal, so he stands to be a free agent at the end of this season. Some guys only get to free agency one time in their career. This guy has a chance to get there for a second time and in the prime of his career. Is he able to handle the pressure as he plays out this final season? Hitters count. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Takes a high fastball for a strike. Well, clearly this guy doesn't need many warm-up pitches because he's 98 miles an hour in the first inning. News flash to the offense. They better get it going. Now the 2-1. Is swung on and missed, and that's strike two. In a double play situation, that's the location you want a guy to swing at. More than likely, he's going to beat it into the ground. Two two hits the top of the zone. He struck him out looking. Now a moment as we take a look at the Jays starting nine for this one. Mark what's your take on him against one of the best starters in the game. Yeah Maddie this lineup is an interesting case study because if you're not a big believer in batting average this team they're in the bottom third of batting average so they have to do it a little bit differently. They have to move traffic and drive the baseball out of the ballpark and into the gaps. We've seen that be successful before. Let's see if it happens again today. Now at the plate, Jay Bruce. First chance for him here with a runner at first and one gone. He's set. Here it comes. And a neck-high fastball that time. And he gets the call that time for strike number one.
And there's one well above the zone for a ball. LeMahieu leads off first with one away. Swing and a ball hit on the ground. And he won't even think about second as he'll flip on to first for the shoe route. Batting four. Center fielder. Raul. Coming Mendoza. to the plate now, Raul Mendoza. And he could give his guys an early lead if he can come through here. First pitch on its way. There's a fastball that just misses ball one. That's the kind of pitch that reminds me of many reasons why I wasn't a very good hitter. This thing was inside and coming in hot, and he just gave a stone-cold take. I'm bailing out of the way if I'm in the box. No doubt about it. Now he gets on top of one here and chops it foul right at home plate. The 1-1. One, one. Down the line and fair. That's a hit. As he arrives at second without a play as they jump ahead with a run scoring on the play. This is why it's so important to give your cleanup hitter an opportunity to hit with runners in scoring position. He does just what he's supposed to do, lacing a double and driving in a run, just like you draw it up. Jason Castro, the catcher, is in. He'll take a look at a strike right down the middle. It's 0 and 1. Looking at his lifetime numbers, Castro is exactly a 260 hitter. Swung on and missed, outclassed by that fastball for a strike. Hey, make a pitch right here and get out of this. Get the boys in the dugout and regroup a little bit. One run is not going to kill you. A one and two count to the Blue Jays signal caller. To two balls and two strikes now. Next pitch will be number 24 in this long first inning. And a pitch takes off inside and gets away. And he's going to make it into third base now as I believe that will be scored as a wild pitch. Well, some would say no harm done with that wild pitch, right? But I disagree. The runner's now 90 feet away from scoring an infield single, a booted ball, and he crosses the plate. That might not be the case if he were still on second. The slider freezes him at the plate. A called third strike, and the inning comes to a close. A run for the Jays thanks to the RBI double. Bottom of the first coming up, and Toronto's off to the early 1-0 lead. Chris Archer, a right-hander from North Carolina, is the man on the mound. Dan, any thoughts? Chris Archer, one of the premier pitchers in baseball. When he's good, he's nearly unhittable. Great fastball with movement. Slider probably his best pitch and the changeup has been much better recently. If Chris Archer brings his A game, it's going to be a long night for the hitters. Stepping in, Jesse Pitts. He'll lead things off here in the bottom half of the first. And now pitch on the way. Nope. Lays off 1 and 0. And Dan D. Rowe, the Blue Jays, as they enter play here this afternoon, they come in trying to bounce back from a loss last time out, but they've been in good form lately, 5 and 2 over their last seven. Yeah, Maddie, this team has been playing really well right now. And, and, and this is case in point. Chance to jump out again to another 1 0 lead. They've really been doing that. They've been on attack, early offensive, almost ambush like approaches to their at bats, and it's working for them. The 2 0. Hit on the ground out to short. A diving try, but he can't haul it in. It's through for a base hit. 
And one batter in, and the Blue Jays are going to have to handle a threat on the base pass. You know, Dero, the old school thinking sometimes is when you're going through a bad streak like this guy, any way you can get on a little jam shot, even though it wasn't pretty, maybe this could get this guy finally going. Yeah, I can't tell you how good that had to feel right there. There's moments where you slap that donut off your bat, you don't even want to walk to home plate. You're scuffling so bad. Into the box, Jeff Pitts. First pitch of the A.B. is swung on and lifted in the air to straightaway center. Mendoza will settle under it to make the play for the first out as the runner will have to head back to first. And with that, a look at the Rays lineup card in this one. Mark DeRosa, tell us about this lineup in a daytime home contest. Well, Maddie, this is a team that likes to swing the bat. They're in the bottom third in the league in walks. They're very aggressive at the plate. Look for this pitcher to nickel and dime a little bit. Does not have to come over the heart of the plate. See if he gets a little swing and miss. This lineup has to adjust itself and grind out some more at bat. Here's the first pitch to him. And a pitch out. Nothing doing though and that's ball one. Pitts, a runner at first with one gone in the inning. And they pitch out here, but nothing's going on. Throw over to the bag, and the runner back in standing. There goes the runner. Mitch misses low. The throw down. Way late, and he's in there easily at second. That's pretty savvy base running, right? A lot of pitchers don't throw over twice in a row, so I think he was going on first movement, and it worked out nicely. Here it comes, the 3 0. Nani extends nicely, and this ball is driven to right field and deep. A leap, but he can't rein it in. It's off the wall. And he'll pull into second with one away. The more things change, the more they stay the same. This guy's been producing at the plate all year long, and this at bat is no different. He's probably surprised it didn't leave the yard after the season he's having, but he'll just have to settle for a double. Riding in, Jeremy Pitts. Good opportunity for him to add to his season RBI total here, which currently sits as third best in the American League. He's set, and the pitch. Missed with a slider. Runners are at second and third with one down. Inside, and he falls behind the hitter now, 2-0. Oh. Boy, it sure doesn't seem like they want to pitch to this guy right here. I get that, but it's just the first inning. Sometimes you have to compete and set the tone. I like that he didn't try to do too much there. All he needed was a ground ball to tie this thing up, and that's exactly what he does. That's great situational hitting. 
Up next for the Rays, Poof Bobo. He had a strong showing at the plate in the first half, currently sitting in third place in the league's batting race. Yeah, well within striking distance to get himself a batting championship title here. He's going to have to put together a nice second half to get it done, though. First delivery to him on the way. And he was rewarded for his incredible first half with an invite to the Midsummer Classic. Always an honor. He's been so consistent all year. His timing, just his presence in the box. It doesn't look like this is going away anytime soon. Probably going to battle for a batting title the rest of the way. Ready to deal. Here's the 1-1. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. And he's really continued to look great in the second half of the season. Over the last 10 games, hitting over 300. No surprise this guy found himself in the All-Star game in the Midsummer Classic. He absolutely had a monster first half. He was almost a certain lock to represent his team in that game. The men on third with two down. And that's low, so a good eye there as he works the count back full. Well, I'll tell you, he's not hitting over 300 by luck. He really knows the strike zone and his own strengths. That last take is a great example. Archer comes set with the payoff pitch. And look out as that one ran in and got him. And I'll tell you, this is the last guy in the lineup you want to put on base for free. He's probably feeling a little salty after getting drilled, and he's got speed to burn, so look for him to try and make something happen out there. In now, Samuel Feliz, as he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. Day off for him yesterday, but back out there for this one. Hoping to limit the damage, here's the pitch. Late decision to swing that time, and as a result, it's 0-2. Archer is a strikeout master on the mound. It will not be uncommon to see him reach a double-digit strikeout total when he goes out there. He uses that to his advantage in just about every start. He sure does, Matty D. And I think one of the keys for him is he gets ahead in the count early. You'll know if he's on when he gets strike one, strike two early on, and then he expands the zone has great command of his pitches and has a knack for making hitters chase pitches out of the strike zone. The one two is swung on and missed strike three. Rays will settle for just the one. One inning in the books here. All tied at one and one. Into the box now. Dan Coyle. He'll get to take his first cuts here. Dan Coyle. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Swing and a miss just behind a lively fastball. Yeah, Matty, he's very late on that first pitch. I, I, I got to think he was guessing off speed. The wind up and the 0 1. Yeah. Favorable call in there for a strike. O2 is a fastball that misses inside one and two now. Hey. And here's a slider strike three called and that'll be the first out of the inning. OK here's how the race set up on defense today. And guys, the things I want you to focus on today, one of them being this manager loves to shift. 
he has the pitching staff to trust to be able to manipulate his defense to try and get as many outs and play the numbers as much as he can. Digging in now, Harvey Jean, as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. First offering on its way. Started to go around there, but he holds up ball one. Bases are empty, one man out. Dude, 1 0 pitches as slider swung on and missed, one and one. Fouled off. The 1 2. Misses, ball two. two, and two. Oh, and this is swung on and missed. Four strikeouts already, and that's out number two. Two up, two down on strikes in this Nine, inning. He looks really Nine, sharp Nine, out Nine, there, guys. Teddy Quinlan. Digging in, Teddy Quinlan. First two men in the inning have both gone down via the punch out, so we'll see if he can fare any better. Here's the pitch. Here's oh, a slider that's point. inside, 1-0. Two out, nobody on. Aye. Boy, that fastball is just sizzling up there. One and one. Now the one and one pitch. Lofted in the air out toward right center. Pitts is there and he'll make the catch to retire the side. Blue Jays go down in order. We'll go to the bottom of the second, tied at one. Coming to the plate now, John Pitts. And he's seen his numbers on the rise here over the last five games or so. John Pitts. He's ready. Here's the first offering. A ball and no strikes. The 1 0 is looked at for ball number two. I don't blame him for not coming over the heart of the plate. He circled this guy on the lineup card when he got to the yard today. He's been swinging one of the hotter bats in the game. Now the 2 0. He's in there for strike one. You know, Matty, I'll never understand this. You work so hard throughout the course of the season and course of this game to get in 1 0, 2 0, 3 1 counts. Guarantee yourself a fastball. 80 to 90 percent of the time and he takes it just can't understand the methodology there and he fouls this one off here now the 2 2 gets him swinging he struck him out all right guys here's the defensive alignment for the Toronto Blue Jays today and the guy I want to focus on is second baseman DJ LeMahieu I think what we need to take into consideration is his ability to play that position at six foot four six foot five with soft hands and the ability to turn a double play we already know he's an offensive force so next to the plate for Tampa Bay Sammy Pitts he's always a long ball threat currently fourth in the American League in that department. First pitch of the at bat. And that one just missed outside. A ball and a strike now. Even at a ball and a strike, here's the pitch. 
strike two at a pitch that catches the outside corner. Into the corner and slicing foul. Hey, I don't mind you throwing a fastball in this situation, but I think if we're being honest with ourselves, that one caught a little bit too much of the plate. The one two. He's swung on and missed strike three. Third strikeout for him already these first couple of innings this afternoon. And as we call on the team leaderboard, you can see that he currently paces the Blue Jays in that category. Now to the plate, Saba Tavitsi. And with numbers like those, he's putting himself in contention for some rookie of the year hardware if he can keep it up. First pitch on its way. Knee high slider that he takes a look at. This should end the inning as it's sent out to second. Gloved by LeMahieu. Throw in time and the side is retired. So they're held in check here this half of the inning. We've played two full. All tied at one and one. At the play, Tyler Flowers. And you see that average below the dreaded Mendoza line. Tyler Flowers. First pitch coming, here it is. Comes right after him with a fastball for a strike. Hard hit ball to second. He gets dirty, but he can't make the play. It's a base hit. Now batting, second baseman. Stepping in and ready for another shot, D.J. LeMayhew. He reached on a walk in his last time up and later came around to score. Here's the first pitch to him. And he lays off there, 1-0. And he watches a called strike as this one bears in on him. One and one. He's set. Here comes the one one. A fastball right over the outside corner. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. Calling for it, Pitts. He's got it one away. Ready for another chance? A Danny Echevarria. He got called out on strikes his last time through. First offering on its way. He goes the other way as this is hit in the air toward the gap in right center. Pitts is there to put it away and the runner will be forced to retreat back to first. Here's Jay Bruce now. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. From the stretch, here's the pitch. A high fastball is in there. That pitch is in triple digits. I think he had to take that one because I'm not even sure he saw it. Popped him up. And the first baseman can't get there. Oh. 
And he turns on this one and yanks it foul and back out of play. Stays alive, still 0-2. Neither guy giving in here, and they'll do it again. Got him swinging, and that will end the inning. Blue Jays held in check. After two and a half, it remains a 1-1 ball game. Late Jesse Pitts. He reached on a single in his first try. Jesse Pitts. Third baseman in tight protecting the bunt the first pitch. And he holds up here but the pitch is a cold strike anyway. Oh one here's the pitch. Bouncing ball foul. The wind up and the 0 2 pitch. A little bit off the outside, it's 1 and 2. Hit in the air down the right field line. And nearly extra bases to start the inning, but this winds up foul by inches. Wow. Fastball, but that's easy to lay off, and it's back to even at two and two. This kind of hitter right here, we call this guy a grinder. What are our grinders? They just kind of foul off some good pitches. They they lay off the pitches just off the plate. This is every pitcher's nightmare. A guy that's up there with a plan and not just up there swinging at anything that you throw towards home plate. And the throw to first now is in time, one gun. And with one away, time for a check of the standings in the American League East as you get a look at where these two teams find themselves entering play. So digging in now, Jeff Pitts. He flew out in his last at bat. First pitch of the at bat on its way. Swung on and lifted in the air to left center. Hoyle has a read on it. He hauls it in without any trouble, and there are two away. At the plate, Connor Pitts. He'll try to follow up the double in his last at bat with another big hit right here. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Just now it's hit the second. Does he have another one, two, three inning? He does. Seven in a row he's set down now as the side is retired. Pretty painless half of the inning, all told. On now to the top of inning number four, all tied at one and one. Next will be the cleanup hitter, Raul Mendoza. Center fielder, Raul Mendoza. First pitch of the at bat. Here's the first pitch chopped foul right at home plate, and that's the first strike. The wind up and the 0 1. And he misses with it 1 and 1. Swing and a miss on the fastball, and it's one and two. Got him swinging in the dirt. He'll throw down to first, one away. Up next for the and while we have a moment, here's a look at the Rays' road to the show report. Two guys there that this organization has to be happy about right now.
stepping in for the Jays. Jason Castro. First time up, he went down looking. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. This is on the ground over to first. And he'll step on first for the out. Three unassisted. The left fielder number. Once again, Dan Hoyle. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. First pitch of the at bat on its way. This should end the inning as it's sent out to second. Throw on to first gets him and the side is retired. One, two, three, go the Blue Jays. On to the bottom of the fourth, tied 1-1. One, one. Digging in, Jeremy Hicks. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Number 43. First pitch coming, here it is. Right over the middle, knee high. And that's into the corner of foul ball and right. You can tell his eyes lit up at the plate right there. He was not able to control his emotions, stay up the middle, and keep that one fair. And smart to lay off there as the fastball misses. It's one and two now. Okay, so now is where I think you pull the string, throw the El Cambio up there. Hasn't seen it yet, and I think he's set up for it right here. The one two is laid off of down and in. And a slider. Oh, got a favorable call on that one as that's the first out of the inning. Well, no preferential treatment there. Sometimes we see great hitters have their calls go their way on close pitches, but not this time. I think that was actually a good take, but on two strikes, anything that close can go either way. Stepping in now, Boop Bobo. Now a swing and a ball chopped foul right at home plate. Last time up, he was hit by a pitch. And he chased up and out of the zone, a swing and a miss. Hey, if these guys are going to have any chance in this one, they are going to have to set their sights a little lower. You cannot expect to get the barrel of the bat to that baseball. That is entirely too high. A one and two count to the Rays catcher. Well, this is an approach we've seen him use effectively lately. Set up the inside and then get him out with pitches away. Outside and low that time. Now it's two balls and two strikes. Look out. Don't want to hit him there. It's full three and two. Wow. From 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. And that last pitch on 2 and 2 wasn't even close. He had this guy in the ropes, but now he let him right back into this at bat. And this is lined softly here to the left side. But foul. Soft liner to the left side. And this will be taken in by the third baseman for the second out. The batter, number 10, designated hitter, Samuel. Standing in, Samuel Feliz will swing it from the left side right here. One of the things this guy would like to do from the left side is swing it a little bit better against right-handed pitching. This guy has decent numbers, but not great numbers against right-handed pitchers. One ball, no strikes to count. Both teams with just two hits apiece thus far. Two balls and no strikes to the Rays left fielder. Remember, he was a strikeout victim last time up, but this at bat seems to be a totally different direction. He's showing good patience now, and he's got a real good count at 2 0. A little bouncer. That's foul, strike one. Yeah. 
Into the windup. Here's the two and one pitch. Popped him up. And that's in there. Base hit. Hey, there's a case of a jam sandwich right there. Not that bad of a pitch, but he's able to just be strong enough to loop that one into left field. Dan, sometimes a jam sandwich tastes much better than a rocket right at somebody. Standing in now, John Pitts. Batting left-handed here as he takes a look at strike one. He was a strikeout victim in his first try. Still no balls and two strikes. And a slider gets away from him here as it just about got him in the ankle. Well, what do you do when guys keep fouling pitches off like this? I guess you could back them off the plate by throwing one inside. Runner aboard at first here with two gone in a 1-1 ball game. Not trying to pick up that outside corner, but this misses, and it's back to even at two balls and two strikes. The 2-2 two -two is a wave and a miss. He struck him out. Ray's strand just the one. Fifth inning coming up, tied at one. Now in the box. Harvey Jean. He'll look to light a spark under this lineup that hasn't found the scoreboard since back in the first inning. Yeah, and for me, the story has been the starting pitching they faced. It's been very difficult to rebound and, quite frankly, dominate after getting roughed up a bit in the first inning of a start. So I'll give him a lot of credit for what he's been able to do. First delivery to him on the way. Nowhere close with the fastball to begin the at-bat. It's ball one. The 1-0 home. It's laid off, but in there for strike one. Really feels like he's just on cruise control out there on the mound right now. Yeah, it really does, Matt, but this offense isn't helping him too much. It sort of feels like the next team to score is going to win this thing. And he lays off for a ball, two and one. High in the air out to center field, moving under it, hits, one out. Now batting, designated hitter, Teddy Quinlan. Standing in, Teddy Quinlan. First pitch on its way. There's a strike. Watching him on the mound, I'm really impressed with what he's doing right now. He's been really aggressive and confident over the last couple of innings. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. Behind 0-2 now. Here it comes, 0-2. And he'll try and tempt him with one in the dirt, but he'll hold back here. It's 1-2. and two. Good pitch right there with the bases empty. Why not take a shot? Throw that breaking ball in the dirt and see if he'll chase after it. One out, nobody on. Nice. 
misses. Ball two. Hey, great job right there. Anytime you're down 0-2, I think it's a successful at bat if you can work it back to an even count and at least give yourself a chance. Into the windup, here comes the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a little tapper. And a full count as that misses. It's three and two now. One run, two hits, and no errors in the game for Toronto. Donnie extends nicely, and this ball is driven to right field and deep. Gone! A solo shot here to straightaway right field. Home run number two for him on the year as Toronto has taken a two to one lead. Wow, he really hit that ball well. Put a great swing on it with great extension and it sailed right out of here. Into the box now, Tyler Flowers. Tyler Flowers. He'll go after the first pitch and bounce it into foul territory. A base hit in his first trip. And a fastball there is inside as that one backed him up a bit. And he misses two and one. One thing's clear. He's not afraid to pitch inside, right? One pitch ducks him away, then he comes right back with another one. So clearly this pitcher, he's not afraid to work that inner half of the plate. Here's the two one home. Tough slider down low for a strike. You know from an offensive standpoint they already knew they had their work cut out for him against a great pitcher. But if he's going to locate like that this is going to be a tough day. Both clubs with three hits in the ball game. And he misses okay. this one inside and that'll run things full three and two. You could pretty much book it that a fastball's coming. A challenge fastball right here. He cannot allow the nine hole hitter to get on base with the top of the order looming. And the fastball blew it right by him, and there are two down. Yeah, as they say, there's a hole in his swing in that location. So a good job there of exploiting that. That can be real hard for some guys to overcome when teams start figuring out what locations you just can't handle. Here's the second baseman, D.J. LeMayhew. He'll swing and lift the ball foul off to the left and out of play. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. Oh, one count. Here's the pitch. And that one stayed too low, apparently. Pulled high in the air out to left field. Pitts is over. And that retires the side. A run for the Jays on the solo homer. Bottom of the fifth coming up. It's now 2-1 to one, Toronto. Leading off the inning, Sammy Pitts. As they'll look to get something going here and even this game up. Here comes the first pitch. Takes a fastball on the inside corner. Grounder hit hard down the first baseline. And he'll step on first for the out. Three unassisted. Now batting number one. So striding in, Saba Tavitsi comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ballgame. Ready with the first pitch, here it comes. Yeah. Takes a look at a slider that catches the inside corner. 
This guy's cruising along, pitching well as we enter the middle innings of this one. Less than 60% of his first pitches have been for strikes. If he could clean that up a little bit, he could really roll into the later innings in this one. Set up away with the changeup, but it's one and one. Fifth inning, two to one our score. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. To two and two now. Two two fouled away. The two two one more time sent on the ground out to second. Mayhew's got it, and he'll whip this one over to first, and he gets his man for the second out. Now batting, center fielder Jesse Fair. Now back to the top of the lineup, stepping in, Jesse Pitts, a hit in two tries so far. Archer gets the sign, first pitch on the way. Takes a high fastball for a strike. With two outs, they're not playing him to bunt here, and he didn't show it there, but I wouldn't be surprised if he wasn't at least thinking about it. He handles the bat pretty well, and he can definitely run. And that one just missed outside. Two and one to the Rays leadoff batter. Line drive to left. And that finds some outfield grass. It's a base hit. So the bottom of the inning is still alive after the two out base hit. Now batting, the shortstop, Jeff Pitts. Stepping in, Jeff Pitts. From the stretch. And a pitch out, nothing doing though, and that's ball one. Perhaps a little low there. It's 2 0. Oh. That can be one of the downfalls of pitching out. It puts you behind in the count. And if you throw another ball, you're kind of in a difficult spot. Here's a look over to first and a dive, but he's back. The 2 0 on the way. Outside, 3 and 0 now. Yeah, it looked like he was going to cruise through this inning, but now a hit and a 3 0 count have changed that. Got to get back in the strike zone right here. Pitts leads off first with a pair of outs in the inning. <laughs> 3 and 1. Got to believe he had the green light in that situation. Two outs. 3-0 count. This guy can certainly handle the bat. That's a perfect situation to let him loose. But I love the fact that he's key holding a certain area and it wasn't what he was looking for. And a good at bat that time as he lays off for ball four. And as a result, that'll move a runner up into scoring position now with two away. Oh man, I think this walk is going to grind at him for a bit. He just missed. And now the inning continues with the man in scoring position. Ready for another shot now. Connor Pitts as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. Trying to hold the lead. Here's the delivery. Line drive to center field. And the two-out threat will not come to pass as the inning is over. 
Rays strand a pair. They still trail it here, two to one. Stepping into the box, Adani Echevarria. It was a flyout for him in his last trip. First pitch coming, here it is. And a neck high fastball that time. One and one count. Here's the pitch. Sharp ground ball to third. Pitts fields it cleanly. Throw to first gets him, so the leadoff man's retired here to begin the sixth. One out now in the Toronto sixth inning. And that'll bring in the right fielder, Jay Bruce. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. Comes right after him with a fastball for a strike. He's been doing a nice job out there on the mound, but the deeper you get into the game, the more the hitters have seen you. This is the part of the lineup that he has to be really careful with. And it's fouled away. Into the windup. Here comes the 0-2 pitch hit in the air down the right field line but this will wind up being a foul ball the next 0 2 fouled off low scoring game thus far two to one here in the sixth hit sharply on the ground and that's through for a hit. Hey, some guys look out there, Dan, they don't care. They can't execute the ball the other way. It's not that easy. They're going to hit it as hard as they can right into the shift and let the chips fall where they may. You know, it's hard, D-Row, when you've come up all the way through high school, little league, college ball, and the minor leagues, and you're used to pulling the ball. That's the type of hitter you are. Some of these hitters are going to have to try to make some changes with these exaggerated shifts. A fastball here is he'll take a look at ball one, one and oh. A hit in two tries for him so far. Here's the 1-0. Hot shot down the line, but a foul ball, one and one. Hey, he looked like he was a little bit out in front on that breaking ball right there. The body can go a little bit. If he was able to keep his hands back a little bit, he might have been able to do some damage with that pitch. Working for the punch out and the offering. And he struck him out. Good pitch there as he registers his eighth punch out of the ball game. Man, they've really had his number so far in this series. That's his fifth strikeout in this series alone. Jason Castro, the catcher, is in as he'll pop this one foul off to the left and out of play. 0 for 2 for him to this point. Gets the fastball by him here, and he's in control 0 and 2. The discipline has just been completely absent from this offense. It seems like they're always finding themselves behind the count. And and a big reason why is they're swinging. There's a swing, and he sends a ball high in the air into left field. And that one is gone on a two-strike count with two away in the inning. It's a two-run shot to straight away left. Home run number 15 for him thus far, as the Jays have opened it up now to 4-1. to one. Well, this game is definitely out of the norm from this guy. I mean, his ERA is in the twos, and they're just hammering him all over the yard. That earned run average will be on the rise after this one. Now, Patty. 
Left fielder. Into the box, Dan Hoyle, as he will take strike one on the fastball here. No balls and a strike. No hits to this point. A good knee-high changeup taken for a strike. Hey, that's obviously the game plan against this guy. Bury it in on his hands. He finds himself down 0-2 now. He doesn't know if he's coming back in there or going breaking stuff down the way. Nothing in two count and the pitch. Hard hit ball to second. Pitts takes it in. He'll whip this one to first in time and that ends the inning. Jays strike for a couple as you get another look at the two run dinger. Through five and a half, it's now four to one in favor of the Jays. At the plate, Jeremy Pitts. He's batting cleanup in this one, but will get us started here in the inning if they look to wake up the bats. Yeah, not much to get excited about with just a single notch on the scoreboard, but you have to give credit to where it's deserved. The pitching on the other side has been really impressive. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. This is on the ground over to first. Flowers scoops it up and he'll step on first himself for the out. Now batting. Catcher. Booth Bobo. Now with the plate. Booth Bobo. First pitch on its way. There's a strike. These are huge innings for a team's morale. The pitcher wants to go out and throw that shutdown inning up and get the boys back swinging the bats again with a chance to capitalize and even extend this current lead. The windup and the 0 1. Missed with a slider. This is the big out to get right here. This is their best hitter. He's a great hitter, and he's a guy that kind of spark plug. He gets this team going. So if I'm on the mound right now, you really want to try to get this guy out to hopefully keep them from getting a potential big inning started. And he'll come back with one in the dirt as the count moves to two and one now. The two one. High in the air down the right field line. But this is going to wind up a foul ball. Here now the 2 2. And he fouls this one off. Here's another 2 2. And the slider misses here, so he runs the count full 3 and 2. Keep in mind, people, the longer the at bat, the higher the likelihood that this becomes his last inning. Now the three and two pitch. And we'll see another pitch here as this ball's chopped foul at home plate. The three, two, one more time. Is swung on and missed strike three. Well, this has been a completely different performance from the offense that we saw yesterday. They were looking like the 27 Yankees 24 hours ago, but they've been held in check so far in this one. That's kind of how baseball goes, though. To the plate now for the Rays is the DH, Samuel Feliz. He singled his last time up. Archer's ready. Here's the first pitch. Fastball and he swings through it to fall behind. What a well executed pitch right there. Just a little bit off the corner right there. Got a great hitter to go a little bit outside his zone. One run, four hits, and no errors for Tampa Bay so far. Drilled right back up the middle. Echeverria has it, and he'll make that play look easy as the throw is in time to end the inning. So they go down without a whimper here. We're through six full. The Jays lead it four to one. Back here on the show. Seventh inning coming up with the Jays out in front as we give you a look at our game summary to this point.
Eddie Santiago is on the pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Eddie Santiago. Stepping up now, Harvey Jean. Leading off for the Blue Jays, third baseman, Harvey Jean. He's ready. Here's the first offering. First pitch yeah, fastball off the plate there, and it's ball one. Some action out in the bullpen. Couple of right handers starting to loosen up. Into his windup. Here comes the 1 0. Grounder down the line at third. The 1 1 home. Swings on top of one here and chops it foul right at home plate. And that's high for a ball. It's two and two. And that's low, so a good eye there as he works the count back full. Another full count pitch home. Hit back up the middle. Pitts ranging up the middle. And the throw to first is in time, so the leadoff man is gone here to start inning number seven. Now batting. Designated hitter. Teddy. Coming forward Quinlan. now, the Toronto designated hitter, Teddy Quinlan. And that last at bat when he went deep, he turned around a pretty good fastball. So I'm kind of thinking this guy's a good fastball hitter. So I might want to move that ball up oh, and sorry, down and in and out and Try not to throw it right down the middle of the plate. Here's the pitch. Oh, look out. Hot shot to third, and there are two away. First baseman, number 21, Tyler Flowers. Ready now, Tyler Flowers. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. A high fastball is in there. Well, he's got him in the palm of his hand now. It's 0-2. After that swing, you just got to reset yourself. You still have a strike to work with, and you, you can't be thinking about how silly you just looked on that last pitch. Now, look out as that pitch sends him tumbling to the ground. Interesting sequence of pitches right there. A real ugly swing on a ball away, and it looks like the batter has a much better idea of what he's looking for after that second pitch. Well, two and two now with two away, and the base is empty. Throws him for strike three, and that retires the side. Blue Jays go down in order as they hold on to a four to one lead. Alex Aoki gets the call from the pen to take over on the mound and start the home seven. Alex Aoki. Leading off the inning, John Pitts. And they'll need him to get something going here. Even though we're moving into the back end of this game, they're only down by a couple of runs. You know that old slogan, a bloop and a blast. They could certainly use that right now. There's a strike at the knees, 0-1. Hey, boys, although I'd love to get all over this offense for underachieving, let's tip our cap to this pitching staff right here. They've been able to execute working all four quadrants and keeping this team totally off balance. Oh one here's the pitch. Change up in for a strike. Not looking good after being down 0 2. I think at the very least you got to work this pitcher's count a little bit. Try and get back into a decent count where maybe you can come through. And this ball's chopped foul of the plate and that'll hold the count at 0 and 2. He's 
ready. Here's the 0-2 pitch. That misses one and two. Count is one and two. And the fastball and easy to lay off that time. Two and two. Kind of pitching him backwards in this A.B. Soft stuff early. Then those last two were fastballs trying to get it right by him. Stays alive, still two and two. Turned on down the line. Well, this is going to be a foul ball as that keeps things at two and two. The 2-2 two -two one more time. Doesn't get the zone. Count full now. Hey, this has been an epic at bat right here. I don't blame the pitcher for a little nibbling right there. Maybe get a swing and a miss. He didn't bite on that one, so now we go full count. Hard hit ball to second. LeMayhew's got it. Oh, and it sailed right over his head at first. This could have been much worse for the first baseman here. He goes up for the throw, leaving his feet, and exposes himself to a potentially devastating collision because the throw was down the first baseline. He's lucky he didn't get taken out right here. Stepping in now, Sammy hits as he'll take a called strike here on a borderline pitch at strike one. He's 0 for 2 in the ballgame so far. Ani takes something off there and had him way out in front for strike two. A ball and two strikes. The one two popped him up. And that'll get down for what should be extra bases. And he's safe. Well, it isn't exactly earth shattering, but when you struggle like they have at the plate all day, you take any extra base hit that you can get. If they can string together a few at bats like that, they're going to get right back into this thing. Standing in now, Saba Tavitsi. Rip down the line. And now from the air, a jump throw. And this will be an RBI as the run comes in to score from third. So a pivotal moment here in digging in now. Jesse hits, but a single here could reduce the deficit to only one. Here comes the first pitch. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. Coyle on the move. He makes the catch, and the runner from second will tag and hit for third. And he's up to third safely now with two gone in the inning. That was a nice job to track that one down in the alley because it definitely saved the run from scoring. Instead, he's only able to move up to third. Ernesto Ochoa takes over pitching duties, looking to get that final out now here in this seventh inning. Ernesto Ochoa. Hits will be his first assignment upon entering as he'll bat with the runner in scoring position here and two away. First offering on its way. 
Here's a two seamer inside to start the at bat. It's one and oh. As long as you actually get it inside, that two seam fastball running towards the hands is a really good pitch. Pitts at third with two away. Hits it high and deep out to center field. Mendoza ranging back on the warning track. He makes the catch. Rays will settle for just the one. We'll look ahead to inning number eight now. Toronto leads this one four to two. Ready once again, DJ LeMahieu. Second baseman, DJ First pitch of the at bat. Takes a look at one catching the outside corner. The wind up and the 0 1. Rounded down the third baseline. Uh, this will get foul for strike two. Into the windup. Here comes the 0 2 pitch. The fastball straightens him up a bit. One and two now. And a good take there. Close, but it's two and two. Doesn't offer it the circle change there, and it goes full three and two. And just when you needed a shutdown inning, a leadoff walk was certainly not on the agenda. He needs a bear down right here. Three two pitch. And a good take there will net him a base runner as it's ball four now to start the eighth inning. That's an excellent at bat right there. The Fell behind it early one and two. Didn't panic or start chasing pitches out of the zone. He's able to lay off three pitches in a row, and he's standing on first with no outs. That's a great job. Here's Echeverria now. And she'll take a look at a slider here that finds the zone for strike one. It could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. And oh that looked like it caught him squarely in the arm. And this is going to be ruled an infield single but the more important issue becomes the health of the man on the mound. Here's Jay Bruce now. He reached on a single last time and later wound up scoring. He comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. And great extension as he drives this one high in the air and deep the other way. And this ball is gone. No chance to make a play on that one. A two run homer for Jay Bruce number 17 for him on the season as they open it up to six to two now. Well that was this lineup's third homer of the game. You know D-Row looks like the boys are dialing long distance from the batter's box so far. <laughs> Yeah, the pitchers aren't fooling anyone today, Dan. Let's see if this trend continues. Into the box now, Raul Mendoza. Very weakly on the ground. He's got a hit in three at-bats to this point. Down and away, ball one. With this one almost in the books, the story was clearly the long ball. What are your thoughts on this offense, fellas? Well, Matty V, I don't know what your thoughts are, D-Roll, but boy, when the weather starts to warm up and the ball starts jumping out like this, 
it's clear that the pitchers need to start making better pitches. Yeah, just great approach. No one really chased today. Really stayed staunch on, uh, on their ability to get that pitcher to come into the heart of the plate. And they did damage with it. Jason Castro will stand in again as we flash you back to the middle innings here. This was a big blow, a two-run home run that really got his guys going. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. That's a strike to throw down. Skips in and he's safe. Close play, but he's in there. Well, this pitcher's out there just trying to get hitters out, and he's having a hard time doing that. So as a base runner, that's a good time to try to steal some bases. He's probably not as focused on controlling the running game as he should be. And here's a swing and a miss as he falls behind nothing and two. Here it comes, 0-2. Hit hard on the ground is short. And that's through into left, a base hit. Now a long throw home. And he is safe at the plate as they continue to pile on. It's now a 7-2 ball game. I mean, that had to feel good right there, Dan. That's his third RBI of the game and extends his team's lead. They might have this one locked up. Well, I tell you, those are always big, those add-on insurance runs. Big RBI right there for a little bit more breathing room. Into the box, Dan Coyle. As he swings and misses at a first pitch fastball, 0-1. Three runs already home here. And that slider is almost in the dirt. Set to deal on a ball and two strikes. Up around the face. Well, this inning pretty much has been one to forget for him, but he's still out there. And it's only going to get worse if he dwells on it and lets the frustration take over. Easier said than done, though. He's set. Here's the 2-2. Fastball is outside. It's full now. 3-2. For the guy on the mound, this is one of those innings where nothing comes easy. He's thrown a bunch of pitches, and this A.B. hasn't been any different. Definitely laboring at the moment. He's set. Here's the three and two. He takes strike three called on the fastball. Couldn't pull the trigger, and there are two away. This has not been a weekend to remember for him. He's just been completely lost at the plate, flailing all over the place. Now that's his sixth strikeout of the series. They've really got him figured out. In now, Harvey Jean, as the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. He's hitless in three at-bats to this point. Behind 0-2 now. Oh and two, here it is. And he strikes him out here, so he's able to stop the bleeding a bit as the side is retired. But they strike for three in the inning. Two on this two-run home run. On now to the bottom of inning number eight. It's the Blue Jays seven, the Rays two. Digging in, Connor hits. He'll see what he can do leading off the home eight. It doesn't look very promising so far in this one as we move into the later innings. 
down by a bundle. It's time to get some base runners and hopefully a long ball to get them back into this one. Ball one to start the at bat. this one in on him and he can't connect so he finds himself down one and two now oh wow that's what they call a jam sandwich wow not much you can do with that pitch that's in tight to two balls and two strikes now never tempted to swing at that ball down low it's ball three Something has to give. Here's the payoff pitch. Count remains full. And this is taken here for ball four. So the leadoff man's on base to kick off the home eight. Well, the reason power hitters generally draw right. more walks than other guys is exactly what we saw right there. Pitchers work around them and nibble the corners a lot more so they don't get burned. He made some good pitches, but he just couldn't get him to chase enough out of the zone. Into the box, Jeremy Pitts. No hits in three tries so far. He struck out once. He's set. Here it comes. And a fastball just a bit up. There's one well above the zone for a ball. Boy, if you're going to throw a pitch like that to this guy, you have to make sure it's up above the zone like that. He can't do a whole lot with that, but if it were a little lower, he can and will make you pay big time. Now a throw over to first, and he'll get back in standing. Now the 2-0. 3-0 oh now. Ochoa. A native of Nicaragua. He's a five-year vet at the major league level. He's set. Here's the 3-0. And boy, that misses as well. It's back-to-back -back walks to start out the inning. Well, it's obvious he wanted absolutely no part of the three or four hole hitters. But he's got to focus here because this guy in the five hole is just as dangerous. Into the box now. Boof, Bobo. From the belt, kicks and deals. A big roundhouse curveball in there for strike one. Pitts on second. Pitts on at first with nobody out. Right over the top with that curveball, and it's 0-2. When your team is behind this late in the game, it's not a good look for you as a hitter to show no discipline and wave at a pitch that wasn't even sniffing the zone. Fouled away. Hey, great job just to be able to foul that one off. In today's game, that's what we're seeing. North-south, pitchers want to elevate, want to get you out above the zone or below it. And another foul ball. And this is swung on and missed. And boy, they took care of a key man there. One away. It's so hard to hit when you're behind the count 0-2, right? Definitely you have to protect for the fastball. Daniel. You have to look for the soft stuff down and away. You're really at a disadvantage when you fall behind 0-2. Standing in now, Samuel Feliz, as he looks at a fastball that misses off the plate for ball one.
Now the 1-0. Bends into the zone for a strike. Hey, that pitch right there caught entirely too much of the plate. Curveball that rolled over the heart of the plate. He's got to pull the trigger on that one. And it's fouled away. First and second now, one man out. The one two he is swung on and missed. He got him. It's been a really rough day for this lineup. There's really no other way to say it. Not a lot of good scoring opportunities. And when they've had them, like right now, it's just been an uphill battle for them to make anything positive happen. Now batting, John Hitz. And with men on base and two away, it feels like this at bat could go a long way toward deciding this thing. No doubt, Matt. A base hit here changes this game quite a bit. But if they can't score here, it looks pretty bleak for them heading into the last couple of innings. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. That was a curveball that never really broke, stayed high. That curveball stayed up in the zone. You'll see that often early in the game where a pitcher's trying to find that release point, particularly with his off speed pitches. We'll have to keep an eye on him, see if he's able to settle down as this game moves on. Now the 1 0. Skied into straightaway right. Bruce has a read on it. And the inning is over. Couple of walks, but no damage. More to come on the show Sunday baseball after this. Striding forward now is the DH, Teddy Quinlan. Designated hitter, Teddy Quinlan. Here comes the first pitch. Grounded to first, backhanded. And he'll flip it to the pitcher covering for the out. First baseman, number 21, Tyler Flowers. So coming to the plate, Tyler Flowers. It was a backwards K, a strikeout looking for him in his last at bat. Here's the first pitch to him. And that one stayed too low, apparently. Bases are empty, one man out. A ball and two strikes to count to Tyler Flowers. Tries to get him to chase the curve ball away, but it breaks outside. Two and two now. Well, that's what you want from your curveball on one and two. You start it in the zone and let it break out of the zone where it can't be punished. Didn't get him to go after it, but the execution was nice. And a pitch down that swung on and sent to second base. And there's out number two. The batter, number 10, second baseman, D.J. LeMahieu. Here's the second baseman, D.J. LeMahieu. First offering on its way. Knee high slider that he takes a look at. A fastball that just misses inside. low two balls and a strike sometimes it can be difficult for a pitcher you're facing a guy that's not known to be a big stick in the lineup sometimes the toughest thing is to be aggressive and throw strikes now the 2 1 he swung on and missed for strike number two bases are empty here with two men out Oh. 
And he takes ball three, so it's a full count now. Adani Echevarria would be next. And there's strike three. So we'll see now if they can manage to hold on to this huge lead as the side is retired. One, two, three, go the Blue Jays. They're on top seven to two. Pedro Harmon takes the mound as he's been called upon to pitch. Number 23, Pedro Harmon. Striding in to start the ninth, Sammy Pitts, and they'll need him to get something going here. First pitch of the at bat on its way. He'll hold off on the slider to start the at bat. It's ball one. The 1 0. Is chased out of the zone for strike one. Hit the other way out toward right field. On the move is Bruce. He's got it one away. Striding into the box, Saba Tavitsi. First pitch coming, here it is. Right hander against right hander as this is a ball one and oh. Aye. Makes a look down at the knees for a strike. Now the one and one pitch. Tried to hold up there. Appeal down to first and no swing. It's ball two. One out, nobody on. Took a good cut that time, but comes up empty, two and two. And that one never threatened the zone. It's gone full now to three and two. And he takes ball four. So a good job out of the nine hole and getting on base as we go back to the top of the order. So the batting order turns over now and set to go. Jesse Pitts, a couple of singles for him in four trips for him this afternoon. First delivery to him on the way. Fouled off. Now, I'm sure these infielders know it, but this hitter can burn down the baseline. So if he puts a ground ball in play, the defense is going to have to make a perfect turn to turn two. He pulls this one high and deep to right center field. Back goes Bruce to the track. He makes the running play. Two down. So striding forward now. Jeff Pitts. He steps in for the fifth time today, giving him a bonus chance, if you will, to keep that hitting streak alive. Looks at a sinker on the outside corner. Good hard slider there, but it runs away. It's a ball and a strike. Tavitsi is off of first with two away. Two and one. He's fallen behind now. Three and one. Well, this has been a good job to work to count from 0 and 1 to three and one and now he's really in the driver's seat to see a heater that he can do something with. Loved by LeMahieu. Throw on to first is going to be in time and the Blue Jays have taken the rubber match of this three game set as this ball game is over. Seven to two the final score this afternoon. The Blue Jays used a nice fifth inning to take the lead and they never gave it back. Chris Archer with his fourth win this season. So that just about does it for Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, and our entire crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, make your way on over to theshownation.com.